so Shane, we're doing this crazy ass piece at uh, my warehouse, Super Fitness, and I'm getting blown up on social media about people think, first of all, who are you? What are we doing? <clears throat> who designed this? And so my question for you, where did you, you came to my warehouse to meet me. Where did you come up with inspiration for a truck on the side of my building? Your trucks. Okay. So I think what I do where most artists um, have a hard time is I work with the client's ideas. They're spending their money with me, so I got to work with their ideas. And they got to be happy with it. I got to be happy with it. Um, so, yeah, with you trucking and moving equipment all over the country and the way you do that, I wanted to put a truck in there along with the other things you do. The hard part is somehow creating a good piece of art out of those ideas. That's where you got to get creative, right? right. How am I going to put this together? where i think it's good art composition i'm proud of it and i want to paint it and you're happy because you're getting what you paid for sure that's the whole key to being a commission artist um that i noticed so yeah so i i just asked him this and um i want everybody to hear this so i asked him so when i started 18 years ago there's a lot of shit that people like me and you do to get your foot in the door to you know you're, you're really doing, I don't want to say stuff for free, but you're doing a lot of favors, scratching backs to do this, to build up a name, to build up a brand. People didn't know who he was. Now they know who he was. They had no clue who I was. Now people know who I am. So my question to you is, how did you determine pricing? And did you do work for free or not? Or did you do a lot of work for cost of material in order to build a name? Because how does someone know what the price are at? Um, I, I don't know what everybody prices theirs at. I just price it at what I have to make. Sure. But in the beginning, I, I wasn't pricing anything. I was donating. Um, I ran out of space in my house, decided to go outside. There was unlimited space, grabbed spray paint, and people driving by mm -hmm. saw it. And they're like, hey, can you paint this? Sure. And I'm like, what do you, so what are you guys? Oh, we're a nonprofit. Um, like, so... Is there no money that flows through here? No, you just, you come here, you disassemble bikes for eight hours, and then you could build your own and take it home. I'm like, so there's no money. And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll donate it. Um, I'm just getting started. I'm learning. You know, if you're going to give me free space, then I'll give you a free mural in support of your nonprofit. So I did a lot of that mm -hmm. uh, just to learn. Sure. You know, learn on like a, a controlled space where I could take my time. And then I became known for that. Sure. <laughs> right. right. Oh, like, I know. And then I'm like driving, you know, an hour to a job, hour home, hundreds of dollars in spray paint. And I'm like, maybe I should just start charging. Sure. Like, maybe I should charge like 200 bucks. Sure. Just to cover some of this. And, you know, and it just kept going and then it gradually went up. And I don't know what going rates are. I don't even really care. Sure. I just go, all right, I got to, I need this much to cover me and plus a hotel and you know all my expenses sure. or whatever so it's really by the job it's absolutely not, it's not square foot it's not what the market's doing i don't know what the market's doing i don't pay attention to mm -hmm. anything uh it's just what works for me and i had a couple other companies and i did the same thing like when you're coming up short at the end of the week it's like we need to charge more sure right completely understand and that i just adjust to whatever company i'm running and what the numbers are showing. And if we're struggling, we got to raise our rates. If we raise our rates and go out of business, I need to figure out a different business. Absolutely. Yeah. And just so everybody knows, when I met Shane and he told me a little bit about that and him giving back, and I've always done schools and police departments and fire departments. And if I can help somebody in need, I always do that. I have to charge them for the equipment, but a lot of jobs like that, especially for the school systems, we make no money on. We just do it out of the goodness of my heart. and. I knew that he was my guy for doing it out of a, I wanted somebody to do my project out of a place of passion and somebody who didn't just want to paint my mural for a, just because they want to put money in their pocket, but they were invested in it. And it's just like me because I build relationships with people. Like I wanted to meet, I liked him off the bat and hopefully he liked me, but I like to do long-term. Like my mind's going crazy as we're thinking like, oh shit. I, I got 10 other projects that I want to do with this guy. Not because 
I want cool murals just because I love cool shit and I love working with cool people. And so that's what I want a lot of people to realize. The more sometimes you give back just in this world, the more in return that me and Shane have gotten. And I think that's why not just my business, but from the work I've seen him do and the crazy stuff he is commissioned. And now I'm getting hit off of social media already, just putting up little snippets of this from people's like, who is this guy? What in the hell are y'all doing? I put up the, the backdrop of this truck before it even got started. And I, probably 20 people have inboxed me already. Like they're curious. And so Shane, let me ask you this. Where, where is the furthest place that you've been right now? So like if somebody thinks that you're just based out of North Carolina, I know you were just in Texas. Do you, will you go all over? Yeah. I, I think the farthest from here was uh, East Bay in California. Um, went out there for like three weeks at the end of last year, did a bunch of painting. Um, I tried getting into Canada. They kicked me out. <laughs> for the look or, or what they look, kick oh, you they, out for? I'm so talking shit. I'm, I'm pulling up. No, I'm pulling up. <laughs> I have my windows up. I had like a long sleeve shirt. I already know how this stuff goes. They're right? stereotyping his ass. And I'm in the truck. There's one car in front of me talking to the customs, uh -huh. you know, where they stop you, ask you what you're doing. Yep. He's talking to them, and he looks over at the truck like that, and then he, he looks once, and he does this, and he just stares, and I'm like, I'm screwed. I pull up. He's like, pull your truck over. Get out of the truck. Stand in front of the truck. They start interrogating me. Oh, wow. What are you doing? You know, and I, can, I was going over to paint for a client, but I couldn't do that because I didn't have a work visa. So I'm like, I'm just visiting. You know, they didn't buy it. Tear apart the truck. They find my stickers. And he pulls out the stickers. He goes, what's this? I go, those are stickers for my art. And he's like, okay, why do you have so many? Do you sell them? Oh I go, God. I used to. I just give them out to people. But why did you name it that? What does that mean? What does this mean? And I'm like, dude, this is like some Gestapo shit. Yeah, no shit. Like, damn, dude. So I was there for like two hours. They put me in a couple different offices. And... um they're like, go back to America, pull over there. They're like, get out of the truck. <laughs> I had to go in there and answer questions. So I'm trying to like spread out, right? And in Canada would have been the first piece out of the country. It's not that far away, but sure. it, in my mind, it would have been big for me. Do you want to um, do stuff overseas? Yeah, I've gotten some requests. Um, I might be going to the UK to do some work. And just so um, everybody knows, I do a lot of business in the UK. And so I'm sure somebody's going to see either the work he's doing for me or stuff like that. And that's why I'm asking these questions because for instance, gyms are huge in the UK and yeah. I think your talents need to be broadcast around the world. Yeah. I got a request from like somewhere in the middle East, I forget where. And they just get like kept hounding me. Mm. Right. They, they're very, they, they kept hounding very me and yeah. like it was a sports center okay. for kids and, and whatever. And, um, Finally, I'm like, dude, what, like, why don't you just get somebody over by sure. you? Like, yeah. this is really difficult to figure all this out. And um, he goes, one, he goes, nobody here could do it like you. Two, they don't have your status. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so what does that mean? He goes, we're bringing you in to show our competition. Mm -hmm. Look who we got from mm -hmm. America to come here and paint, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm still trying to figure this out. I talked to some people and um, one guy, it was a, a friend of a friend. He's like an independent contractor. He's like, that's a no-go zone. He goes, do not go there. You cannot go to that country. Wow. <laughs> He's like, that is crazy. He goes, they will offer whatever amount of money you want because money is not an issue sure. to them, but it is not safe because you can't go there. So I had to bail on it. And then like the dude was not happy. Wow. But I'm like, I've just been informed, like, like, whatever. They're not a fan of Americans right there. Wow. I can't really go there. I didn't know right? that. So, I, yeah, I've had requests um, out of the country, but haven't done one yet. I tried. One thing I want to, uh, <laughs> that I've been picking his brain apart about while he's been here. And I, obviously, I'm in the fitness world. I not only train, I used to be bodybuilder back in the day, but I sell to bodybuilders and stuff around the world i have torn my body apart moving gym equipment i've seen this man work a few days and i asked him especially when i first met him i'm like 
how do you feel doing this work? And I've watched him and he'll work 30 minutes an hour and take a few minute break. And because he's back and forth with his shoulders. And so I don't know if anybody's ever asked you that, Shane, but I want you to explain to the camera how grueling this is on your body and taxing. I don't think it would be that bad if I didn't beat my body up my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know people that started construction like 30, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's like I was doing it at 16. So by the time I was 40, I'm like, everything hurts. Yeah, yeah. On top of crashing snowboards, yeah. three wheelers, mm -hmm. dirt bikes, cars. Sure. Right. Crashing shit all the time. Doing construction. Hold on, riding a um, freaking motorcycle cross country probably multiple times. Yeah. Not a not a cruiser. That don't probably do good for your back. No, my back's broke. <laughs> Plus, I got so it's compressed the spine. Sure. I got bulging discs. I got a herniated L five. It's a, it's a nightmare, and it's my fault. I'm not complaining. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I'm the one that did all this. But, Mine too. So for me, it's hard. Like I. Started when I painted Top Gun, I started going to the gym there just because I felt myself falling off so sure. quick. Sure. I'm like, I got to get my diet under control. I got to do some type of exercise and try to counter this destruction that I've done to my body for 30 years. Yeah, of right? course. Yeah. So for me, like some days I'm good. Other days, like it just sucks. I'm in pain all day, but um, I don't know what else to do. But I think it's hard work either way. This is like construction yes. doing walls like this, like construction work. So, which was my whole background was construction. So to me, it's, I've done it so long. It's second nature. Some people might struggle if they're like a uh, behind the desk type person, they might have a really hard time. Uh, if, if you're good with your hands and used to working with tools, you'll probably adapt well, but you know, if you're beat up like me, it could be a struggle sometimes. Let me ask you this. <laughs> do you think anybody with an artistic ability can do what you do? I feel like they can. You do? Yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't think that I was born with a gift to be really good at art. Okay. I think I paid attention. I put a lot of time into yep. it. Hours and hours when I was a kid in my bedroom drawing and, you know, spray painting. I don't know how many hours. At least 5,000 hours I put into it. So... You know, sometimes it bothers me. You're like, oh, you're just gifted. And it like takes away all the hard work that you put agree. in. Right. And then some people ask, well, well, how do you know, like, I'm going to tell them something that's going to make them really good their first time. And I'm like, you need to put 5,000 hours in. I've done it in multiple careers. Like after 5,000 hours, something mm -hmm. clicks in your head and you just know what's going on. Not to cut you <laughs> off, but I want to tell the camera because I get asked from a lot of people to mentor, to do a lot of things. People ask me for heartfelt advice and i always tell them put the time in be consistent and i truly feel anything's possible am i artistic enough to do this no but i do think that anyone can almost do anything they put their mind to with the right amount of time and i always tell people time it's what he just said five thousand hours this is not going to happen overnight that you can no. just do this it's, it's got to be almost like an obsession like yes 24 7 you know, like you have this, but I guarantee when you go home, it's not over with. Oh, when you leave at starting. five or whatever, it's not like, oh, let me let me just put that down and I'm not going to deal with that mm -hmm. until nine o'clock yep. tomorrow. No, it's all night. My, my phone's it's all night. Constant. It's midnight. You're checking shit. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's how you get to this point is you have to do it 24 seven all the time. You can't mm -hmm. go. I don't feel creative today, so I'm just not going to do stuff. Right. Like if I just didn't show up for three days because I didn't feel creative. Oh, yeah. I'd probably not get another job after this. I guarantee it. Right. Yep. So a lot of it's just hard work, passion, a little bit of obsession. Mm -hmm. Right. Which it, obsession's not bad if you like it. I, I, right? I so think like, obsession can be The important thing is you got to do something you're interested in and that you want to do. And it might not make you money. Mm hmm. But you're going to do it anyway if that's what you want to do. You're not concerned about it. Key money. point he just made. I got into fitness because I loved it. He was painting rooms in his house out of sheer passion and love. And so now we make money doing our passions and love. But honestly, I've told people this for 20 years. I would help people sell them a treadmill at cost for free for the simple fact of just helping an overweight person. I love to get that text or call. And that they changed their life. They got off their medication, whatever. 
And I know he's done a lot of work for cities or whatever who cannot afford. And that's out of sheer passion. And I think a lot of people miss the boat on that right there of n doing things for the wrong reasons. If you do anything in this world for the right reasons, I just feel like good things and good energy is going to come back to you. Yeah, you can't do all of them. You can't help everyone. Yep. You know, me and him was talking about this yesterday. We can't yeah. help everybody. Yeah. And you, you got to know your limits on what you you could do. And you don't want to put yourself out sure. over it. Because um, if you're out, you're no good to anybody, you know. Yep. So it, it's finding a balance. And, you know, a few times a year, I'll, I'll donate a piece or do a festival or whatever. And, and I don't expect anything out of them. I just do it. Um, yeah, I recommend, like people asked how I got started. Some girl in Texas is like, how do I get my first mural? And I said, go donate to a nonprofit that you believe in. Right. I love that. Like the people you'll meet there and the contacts mm -hmm. or whatever, like it, it's just like, mm -hmm. it's a whole nother world, you know, mm -hmm. and do one you support, right. Yep. Cause then you'll want to do it. Wanna... You're going to be passionate about mm -hmm. it. And a lot of the people that surround themselves with that nonprofit scene, are very connected and they know a lot of other people. Um, so it's a good network to get into that. And you're amped up because you, you're supporting right. something you believe in. And um, you'll just be surprised how much comes out of like being unselfish and doing stuff for other people without expectations. Um, it's, you know, I never expected anything out of the spray paint art form and this gave me a whole career. No, I know. Um, which was based which on donating and just kind of doing the right thing and out having fun with it. How I'll end with this and we're probably going to do several of these, but Shane, let me ask you this. How I want to touch on that. You, you're meeting the right people. You're do you're going to this nonprofit who makes you meet other people within the city or whatever. How big, I know in my case, those handshakes, and I've told you about this, that I made 20 years ago, and being at the bodybuilding shows yeah. led me to the people I do business with now, 20 years later. So for 10 years, I robbed Peter. You, you were building a network without even knowing. Correct. It. So you were just out passionate about, you know, bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, you're meeting everybody in the scene. You built this network, and so happens this thing, little thing you were doing on the side to put better equipment in your gym and you know have this cycle out of the old equipment was an idea 100%. and you're like well crap you're like everybody's hit me up for this now maybe i could you know make it somewhat of a business sure. but what you did everything's relevant right like yep. me doing construction for 20 years you know is like i know how to use these lifts right i'm fabricating and making things specifically for my spray paint and tools to get this job done easier that's through building i didn't know when i was building and working with designers mm -hmm. and architects and engineers that all this would come into play down the road with my art right i'm painting architecture this mm -hmm. is design and stuff or you know using colors using the shape of the building all this is relevant i didn't know when i was doing carpentry work and doing all this that this knowledge will be useful later sure so you just don't know right like I, so i think everyone wants to come up with this perfect plan of like well i want to sell gym equipment but i gotta get this many pieces first and i gotta get this building yeah and i gotta and it's like none of us who got anywhere had a fucking plan for anything you just fucking do it <laughs> we're just out like doing yeah. stuff because we're hustling we yep. like stay busy and then we're like Oh crap, that might this over here is kind of whatever. I thought I'd be a bodybuilder, sure. but it turns out I'm gonna be the guy that supplies everyone with gym equipment no, I, in the freaking country. I like, love what you just not said. Not your though. plan, but it like it with wasn't me, my plan. It, Yours and either. This wasn't my plan either. This landed in my lap. Yep. And what happened was is people saw me as this guy that gave them hope, right? And it was something positive. I didn't think it was going to be that, right? I didn't think it was going to be anything. Sure. But like once I saw people were viewing me this way, it's like, what am I going to do? Just like turn my back on this? Right. Like, no, like when it lands in your lap, you do the right thing and go, it's not what I thought it would be as an artist, this mm -hmm. inspirational, positive guy, you know, connecting with people and sharing stories like. It's not what I type of artist I thought I would be, but when all the people are looking at you, like, no, you are the guy. So what's next? Like, um, you got to do it right. And sure. your plan was bodybuilding and doing all that, but like this 
landed in your lap yep. and it's like it's here i'm gonna do it sure of course. <laughs> right? if i could save gyms 20 percent or whatever it is when they start their new gym mm -hmm. compared to buying all this stuff brand new sure and i can make a living and they could get a break mm -hmm. like this it's a win-win yeah i'm it's still related to bodybuilding, right? This is still related to construction. So your network and your background, you would attribute all the years of like almost like building blocks, the foundation yeah. to success now. It helps. It's all relevant. All that stuff is. I agree. Um, but, you know, I, as far as having a plan, I'm just a like, believer in doing shit. Okay. <laughs> like some I'm people, identical. Some do people gotta have a whole plan. I'm like, don't have a plan. Just go do yep, shit. Do it. Well, I don't know what to do. Do anything. Just go do and, it. And you can cut this if you want. But me and him is talking about filming, and this is all raw and unscripted. We had no plan when we sat down. But me and him yesterday is just like, let's do it. Film it. Post it. Yeah. There's no plan. There's zero plan. <laughs> the plan is I'm going to put chairs here yeah. and set up a camera and yeah. we're going to have and a, a conversation, bucket. right? Yep. That's the plan. But, and this might turn into something down the road with, you know, long form stuff sure. with me or you, I don't know, but it's, it's like, it feels right. right. Let's do it. I right. Agree. And we're both relevant, you know, on the social media scene. So like, why wouldn't we? I agree. Um, but yeah, there's it, too many people are trying to have like this great plan. And I feel like if you just go do shit, and you do enough of it, you'll start to figure out what you want to do. And if you're doing what you want to do and you're passionate about it, you're going to start attracting other people. And then, like, it turns into something. But I if you never did. went outside or you never went out and tried anything, none of that would have happened. Right? You might feel like you're wasting time. Like, I, I went down every art form. Sure. Right? So I was, like, painting on canvas. And I was doing oil. And then I was doing acrylic. And then... I was doing these crazy abstracts where I'm like scraping paint and doing all this wild stuff. And then I had no room left in my house, this small apartment in Charlotte. And I'm like, fuck it. I can go outside. I'll grab spray paint. It was unlimited space. Right. But it was like this whole thing of like spent years, sure. you know, but it's all relevant. Yeah. It wasn't a waste of time. Mm -hmm. I got better at art. Sure. I understood more about art composition and color use and scaling and all that stuff. Yeah. I can't sell a piece of fine art. You sure. know, but I could do these walls all yeah. day long. And, you know, but the bottom line is if I didn't go outside mm -hmm. when there's no and room just left really in get the house started. and grab yep. spray paint and go, I'm going to drive up to Salisbury because there's some walls up there and I'm just going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. If I didn't do that, people wouldn't have drove by and saw it. They wouldn't ask me to do my you next You got to get your name out there. And I always tell people too, and I'm sure he'll attest to this in his own story from talking to him. I tell people my gym lost money for 10 years off and on, but those trials and tribulations is what made me so good at building other people's gyms now, 20 yeah. years later, and helping someone make money within the business because my failures led to my success of helping others. So if he would have done, not done the same thing and just get started and get himself out there, if I would have still been holding back to open my first gym 20 years ago, I damn sure wouldn't have this business now. No, I'm an idiot. Help. I got to do everything the wrong way to learn the right way. 100%. So that's how I learn. Yep. Right? Do this. That didn't work. Do this. Don't do that again. And then, oh, boom, that worked. Yep. <laughs> right? No. People yeah. think it's just been a win my whole life. Like, I just go out and the first thing I do, like, flourishes. They don't understand. There's nine losses to every win. Right? So I got to try 10 fucking times yep. to get one thing that works. And then most of my life has been, I'm going to get into carpentry because I can make a decent living, right? So everything I've gotten involved with has been twice as much work as I thought, and I got half of what I thought I would get. <laughs> Until I went out and did something with no intentions, sure. and then I got tenfold yep. what I thought I would ever get. Yep. So Same I here. think chasing your passion and what you love to do, I mean, in my life and through my experience, that's the one thing that's worked the best it's been the easiest and it just flows i agree right I agree. and that was probably like this too like it's almost like the universe is like you're going to do this whether you want to or not and i'm yep. going to give you signs everywhere showing you should do this sure you know that's my experience with the art yeah nobody's just going to say hey start doing the art over here start selling gym equipment it, it don't happen like that no and that's another thing with artists they think well i'm going to come up with the 
unique composition that nobody else has. And I'll just do it. And then somebody's going to come along and find me. And they're going to go, oh, we've been waiting for you. Sure. And so come with us. We're going to get you sponsorship. We're going to take you all around the world. And we're going to get you paid a lot of money for yep. your art. I've never seen that happen to anybody. Sure. I don't even know where that comes from. Sure. Right? But, like, people are under the illusion, like, that's how you become an artist. Mm -hmm. Or, right, or you could just work with regular people. Mm -hmm. Don't make them feel intimidated about knowing nothing about art. I feel like I don't know a ton about art. You told me that the first time we met. And, you know, I just paint what I think looks good. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, an art critic probably say it sucks mm -hmm. and probably come up with a million reasons why it's not good. But, you know what? A lot of people like it. Well, that's... A lot of average people like my art. Your 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 person that's not this you know this art expert mm -hmm. are attracted to my art and so like that's a thing. But I think Whether that's people also you being equivalent. Um, you're being humble, and I think your humbleness attracts those people because you're the first to say. You just said I don't know, I, I don't feel like I know that much about art. Yeah. And I always tell people half of it I don't understand it. Right, and I tell people every day that I. Learn. I want to learn every day more about gym equipment. I research it. I this, I that, yeah. because I want to get better in my craft. And I truly want to be the best for me, not yeah. to make more money, not no. to do anything. Just that's just me. And I can tell there's a few things up here that was not even on the rendering that he's like, well, I didn't like that. Or I added this. And this is like probably all on like, like this is because he wants it to be badass. Yeah. I wanted to, I want to produce the best art I can. And I have to constantly be learning, adjusting on the fly, and, you know, willing to learn. Don't act like I know everything, because once that happens, you're learning nothing. I completely right? agree. And there's always something to learn with art. I feel like it's the most complicated thing in the world to understand. Sure. And it's not been easy, like, you know, learning color use and composition and, you know, working with shapes of buildings. And I have my own way, and I feel like anybody that's went to art school will probably pull their hair out if they watch me mine too figure the way this i run out, my business it's chaos yeah right? it really is my whole business and, is chaos yeah but it's just like the way my brain functions yep. and how i make sense of things um so i don't i don't even think you need you know formal training or whatever you can learn a lot of this online you could post it on social media market it for free so you don't need to you know go to art school and then when you get out of art school you get into the galleries and like everybody's taking their cut Yep. Right. Yep. That's the old, you know, way of doing things. Now you can learn it online. Mm -hmm. You can market yourself. You don't have to give somebody marketing free guys. It's free. free. You don't have to give a gallery 50% and sign these contracts and owe the art school 120 grand. Sure. Um, you can literally figure all this out on your own, but you got to put like hundreds and thousands of hours in <laughs> doing it. Mm hmm. Right. You don't, you know, just know you weren't born with a gift to look at any piece of equipment in the world and go, I know that's worth that much. And that's worth that much. And I could sell that for that. Absolutely much. not. Is that because is that you were born with that? Gift? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. I tell people I still learned every day. And, and here's the thing, guys, the market changes. And I'm sure even with artwork, you got if he would have showed up just to be very real and being like, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to do this, blah, 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 here, you know, the, the, the price. We, honestly, the first hour we met didn't even discuss price. I didn't even have a clue what this would even cost. And what I liked about that was I knew that, like, he thought the project was cool, blah, blah, blah. And to me, that means more than anything because I don't really give a shit about price as much as being able to. And I feel like people, like, at the end of the day, you know, artists are beating themselves up over a thousand bucks here and there. And I'm like, if the people want to use you, they, they, that thousand or whatever, like, it's not going to be a big deal. Sure. Though, right. Sure. You're right. It's just not like most people. It's I want to make sure I have the right person. They're going to show up. They're going to execute this. They're yep. going to get, get along with my workers. You know, if a guy pulls in to pick up equipment, he's not going to have to deal with an Super attitude. Important. Yes. He's going to be able to lock the gate when he leaves. He's, you know, going to work decent days and put in a lot of hard work. Like that's worth more than going with somebody for a thousand dollars less. They show up when they want. They got an attitude towards all your employees and everyone here. They do things on their own schedule. It takes three times as long to get sure. done. They start making excuses. On we why call them divas. 
Right. So, like, wait, do you want to risk it? No. Right? No. <laughs> like, but we'll end right there because I got a thousand questions for this man. And we will continue this because I'm excited to keep picking his brain because I think he has a lot to say. All right. Cool. Awesome, brother.